Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. I want to actually fight a video game villain. Let me show you what I mean. So picture this. You're playing Skyrim, maybe even in VR, and you're super engaged. You feel like you're really there, visually and orally. And at some point, you encounter an enemy. Combat's about to start, and... Button mashing world record. Yeah, kind of breaks the whole immersion. And that's kind of lame. So what if you could actually fight the enemy? Here's what I'm thinking. Have a punching dummy in the exact position of the virtual enemy, so that when you reach out to touch the draugr, you actually feel it, and can, well, punch it and stuff. The dummies need to be able to move around and take a hit, kind of like these tackle dummies. A system of cameras should track the position of the dummy and the player so that the game knows where the player is, and where to have the virtual dummy so that the visual feedback and the touch or haptic feedback match up. And what else? Uh, the dummy will eventually need wheels, a gyroscope or digital compass to track which direction it's facing, and a Wi-Fi module so that it can communicate with the computer wirelessly. Okay, let's get some virtual stuff done before spending money on actual stuff. For this project, we're going to have to track the position of objects in space. So to do that, I'm thinking we just use the color tracking program from the last video, and then make sure that everything that needs to be tracked is a unique color. A single camera can track the position of an object in a 2D plane. So that means if we want to track the position in 3D space, we just need two or more cameras. Using 90 degree cameras, if the object is two thirds across camera one's field of view, we know it's a 60 degree angle from that corner. If it's halfway across camera two's field of view, we know it's a 45 degree angle from that corner. And after some math, we have the location of the object. So this program is going to use the OpenCV2 library and a lot of the functions that we made in the last video, hence these 600 lines of code. But the main loop is here, and this is how it works, or at least the gist of it. We're going to capture the screen twice so that we can analyze it once for red and once for blue. And then we're going to resize both of those so that it's faster to analyze. We're going to update the X and Y position for red, the X and Y position for blue. And then we're going to print those values onto a file called positions.txt. Then we're going to print the X and Y values to screen so we can make sure they make sense. And then we'll wait until the user hits Q to break the loop. This update xy function just does the math to get the x and y coordinates from the angles of the cameras. This prototype will obviously be some sort of video game, so let's use Unity, a free, somewhat user-friendly video game development tool. I don't know how to use Unity, so I'm going to go watch a bunch of tutorials. Okay, I've got a handle on Unity now. You can set up a scene pretty easily and even get a simple game going with some default scripts. I made a basic scene with four walls to resemble a room, a red cylinder for our dummy, and a blue cylinder for our player. To actually script the behavior of the cylinders, we'll have to write some scripts in C-sharp. I don't know C-sharp, so I'm going to go watch a bunch of tutorials. Okay, I've got a handle on C-sharp now. We want the cylinders to be at the location of the player and the dummy, so we'll write a script that reads location data from the file created by the color tracking program and have the cylinders appear at those locations in real time. The cylinder is going to start at the position 0, 0, 0. Then what we're going to have it do every frame is update, and read the new position out of this file. It's going to read the two lines, and then it's going to convert those two variables to floats. And then we're going to close the file. Then all we're going to have it do is put the target, or the cylinder, at the new location, which is going to be our x multiplied by some scale plus some offset, and our z multiplied by some scale plus some offset and then we're going to have it move to that position. The blue cylinder for the player is going to be the exact same thing. The only difference is it's going to skip the first two lines in the positions file because that's the data for the red cylinder, and it's going to store the data from the third and fourth line, and the rest is exactly the same. After dragging the scripts onto the cylinders, we should be good to go. Now I've got the 90 degree camera set up, and let's give it a whirl. I'm going to run the color tracking script, and hopefully we should see the cylinder move to my position. And it seems like it's working. There's a good amount of lag since I'm running Unity and QuickTime to record this at the same time. It works fine with just me, so now let's try it with the red dummy as well. It's a bit awkward moving the dummy here because of all the stuff attached to its face, which track the direction it's facing and motors to, you know, make it move. But all that to come in greater detail in part two.
I'm really excited with how this first part turned out. Be sure to stay tuned for part two, where we'll have everything communicate wirelessly and move autonomously.